Hey, what's good, y'all? Fusion here, back with another video. And today, we're going to go ahead and be talking about the Celtics and the Mavs game yesterday. Uh, the Celtics are on a 10 game win streak. Um, and they're playing well, man. Like, they are really, um, I think, finding their way, uh, finding how they want to play. Uh, we had a 32 point night from Jason Tatum. 25 from Jalen Brown, 24 from Chris Bosch Brazingas, 13 from Derek White, but he had seven rebounds and eight assists. Uh, you had a great defensive game by by Drew Holiday. He had 11 and seven, uh, two steals and a block, but uh, he was shooting efficiently. He went three for three from the three and was playing great defense altogether. Um, 12 from Al Horford off the bench. You have Pritchard give you 10 off the bench. 138 to 110. Uh, the Mavs, um, Luka had 37, 12, and 11. Quick triple double for him. I think what lost him was Kyrie. He went one for seven from the three, nine for 23 from the field. So 39% from the field altogether. Um, Lively had a 7 uh, for 7 game, a 100% from the field. Shout out to him. Um, but when Kyrie is lacking, you need Tim Hardaway to show up. He only had 10 points. He didn't do what he could have uh, been doing here. And I think that's what really caused him uh, to lose here. But that being said, um, as a Lakers fan, I hate seeing like the Celtics winning and playing well. But as an NBA fan, when the Celtics are playing great, the NBA does better. When the Lakers are playing great, which they played uh, great the night against the Clippers. They played all right against the Wizards. Um, we got the win, but it shouldn't. It should never be this close with the Wizards. We should be blowing them boys out. Um... But we got the win there. So anytime that those two teams are playing great and winning, I think it's good for the NBA. Uh, their legacies teams, uh, they're important to the NBA. And I really do think that the Celtics got better over this off offseason. And I think that they can actually be a threat this year. Um, adding Drew Holiday, adding Christoph Porzingis to an already strong team. Uh, they lost a, little, lost a little bit of bench presence but then moving Al Horford to the bench and he can give you 12 um, or like 15 points uh, consistently is great for them and this was a statement game I think a lot of um, uh, a lot of these mid-season games uh, uh, these regular season games are statement games you're going to be playing against um playoff bound even some of these are like finals bounds teams you need to make your statement and you need to make mark your claim right now and tell them that you are better than them and that's what the celtics have been doing and that's what i think that they will continue to do i think when it comes down to it uh, the celtics are legit uh, they're first in the east um and they don't lose games bro like they are on a 10 game winning streak against strong teams but that's all for my analysis. Let's go ahead and get started. Perkins, I'm Malika Andrews. The Boston Celtics, they keep on rolling 10 consecutive wins for Boston now. This is pretty impressive, right? That three-point shooting that they have is just devastating. You have to hope that they have an off-night shooting to even have a chance in the game. And they've got so much redundancy, so many different things that they can go to. Dallas was right in this game in the third quarter. They had the, there was a ball in the air where they could have gone ahead, and within minutes they were down 10, timeout, and they never smelled the lead again. It's the best team in the NBA. Doesn't mean they're going to win the title necessarily, but they're my pick. They're the best team in the NBA, and what I loved, and Perk, you're going to love this too, when things got a little tight in the third quarter, Jason Tatum put his head down and started going to the rim, and he didn't make shots every time, but two of them he missed. Porzingis put one back. 
Horford put one back. That's another thing that happens when you go to the rim. <laughs> Offensive rebounds. Tatum got to the line, and then he made one. You and I have been talking all year. Yep. They're going to be nights where it ain't pretty, where you don't make 21 threes or whatever they made tonight. Mm -hmm. That's what they're going to need in some of those ugly, mucky playoff games. Tatum made Luka call Stanley Steamer cleaners and get the, and pay for the mud that he tracked up in the first half. That's all. What did he say? What did he say? All I was asking for out of Jason Tatum was to fight back. And you know what happened when he started to come out in that second half and be aggressive? We saw separation. And all of a sudden, the Dallas Mavericks couldn't recover. This is how good Jason Tatum is. When he wants to impose his will and be a threat at the basket and be a threat offensively and show why he's one of the most skilled players in the game. Um, yeah, just real quick. Um, that's what Jason Tatum is. He reminds me of Kobe. I think he still needs the um, his IQ. Sometimes lacks. I mean, four turnovers. And I know... Two of those were easily like preventable, uh, but four turnovers in the first half. Luckily, he didn't have any later on in the game. But you see him attack. Uh, you saw him take two three pointers in, in the first half, but then he got hot and got aggressive. A aggressive Jason Tatum is a scary Jason Tatum. He can create for himself. He can make space for himself. He can hit the mid-range jump shot. He can hit the three. He can attack off the dribble. He can take you one-on-one. -on -one. He can get to the line. Jason Tatum can do anything when he wants to. I feel like sometimes he uh, takes a back seat. Um, I don't know why he does that, but sometimes he does that. I wish we saw a killer Jason Tatum more often. And I think we are going to see him a lot during this playoffs. This is this Celtic team goes to another level. Also, I want to point out Christoph Porzingis, right? The the revenge tour. He smacked the Knicks a couple of, uh, games ago and felt proud about that. And tonight he came out. He was aggressive in the first half. He was protecting the rim, rebounding at a high level. And you just see him playing with such joy. And I just think if the Celtics keep continue yeah. to have that balanced attack of using post-ups, attacking the basket, and knocking down those threes, that, that damn show going to have a definite chance of winning the NBA championship. 25 points for Brown, 32 for Tatum, 24 for Kristaps Porzingis. Mm -hmm. I should point out that 10 consecutive wins is the longest streak by any team in the mm -hmm. NBA this season. Coming into this game, Perk, you picked... I want to shout out Kristaps Porzingis as well. He was out for a long time, came back, and been hooping ever since. Um, he adds height, um, height, I don't know why the fuck I said height, um, wingspan length, he can shoot, he can score, he's just a third option, and him being your third option is sort of crazy, because he can get you 24. Uh, Jalen Brown, uh, the dunk contest, uh, runner-up, he had the best dunk in the dunk, <laughs> he had the best dunk in the dunk contest. Bro jumped over at 4'11", nigga, bro. Um, but he had 26 uh, last night. And it was a consistent 26. That's one thing about Jalen Brown. Um, some nights he's not going to go left and do anything. But some nights he'll, he'll get you the, the, the easy 25. Um, he can shoot the three. He's athletic. Um, I mean, he had a couple good back cuts this game. Um, but one thing, they kept... A high-scoring Mavericks game to 110 points. We don't talk about a lot of, like, their defense. Um, but Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum are both great defensive players. And they have good defensive mind. Um, they run good sets on the defensive end, I think. And they don't foul a lot. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at these. Stats here. Uh, total rebounds, 47 to 42. Boston up on that. Uh, fast break points, 18 fast break points. Dallas had 10. Eight blocks to the Dallas. That's four blocks. Four steals apiece. Um, 38 off uh, defensive rebounds to 32. Boston up on that. Um, 
Mavs won the offensive rebound battle. Uh, they had 10, but Boston had nine. And points off of 13, uh, points off of turnovers, 13 apiece. So stats show that they are very even in those certain stats. But the Mavs has always had this issue of defense, of finding, finding the defensive guy, um, stopping players from scoring. When it comes to that, I think that's one of the Mavs' only weaknesses. And I like the Mavs. I like watching uh, Luka play. Uh, Kyrie had an off night, but he'll give you 25 um, easily. So, uh, yeah, man. I think that this Boston team just proved something here. Proved that they can stop a strong offensive team um, and score as well. And having two um, great offensive guys already... Boston was already a strong East team, but adding a great defensive guy with Drew Holiday, um, adding Christoph Porzingis, pushing Al Horford to the bench. Uh, Derek White is playing quite well. Uh, quite well. Uh, you got Pritchard in there. He's um, being efficient, um, being efficient and effective. You just have a dangerous team, man. Uh, I think it's hard to beat a healthy. Celtics team in a in a seven game series. You got to beat them four times. I don't know many teams that can really beat the Boston um, beat Boston Celtics four times uh, before that they lose four games. I think that you may have uh, the Bucks. Uh, the Bucks have been playing well. Um, I think Damian Lillard his uh, play is gonna uh, increase this last uh, month or so uh, before the playoffs. Um, I think Giannis, he's settling in, of course. Um, he's been playing great. I think he's really learning how to play with another um, superstar. And I think that this Bucks team is pretty crazy. But I think these two teams in the East, uh, the Bucks and the uh, Boston Celtics, are the two teams that may come out, in my opinion. Two and a half, right? Teams in the Western Conference. Two and a possible. Two and a possible half that you liked over the Boston Celtics. After watching that, do you care to revise that? No, no. I mean, look, the Dallas Mavericks are, you know, are not a top four team in the Western Conference, right? You still got the the top dogs, which is the Clippers, the Timberwolves, and the defending champs, the Denver Nuggets. And look, I wouldn't be surprised if the Celtics win the championship. I wouldn't be shocked. But I'm saying is, is this, they're still in a weaker conference. Hmm. They playing great basketball, but let's not lose the fact that they're in a weaker, weaker conference. So my fast math here is that the Celtics starters scored 105 points. Mm -hmm. Dallas as a team scored 110, Zach. Okay, well that doesn't seem great for the Mavericks. And look, I'm not gonna panic about this if I'm the Mavs. This okay. is a tough team on the road. Luka played great, Kyrie didn't make shots. The Celtics made a million threes. You did not, they were nine of 34, Dallas from three, but I, well, one little thing. Mm. They traded a first round pick for Daniel Gafford. Played six minutes tonight, he didn't play at all in the second half. This is the second time in a row he's barely played in a game. Daniel Gafford's a good player. He makes sense on their team, another lob threat. But that's a lot of resources to give up for a guy who's kind of already becoming like a luxury item for well, them that they well, don't the use all the time. The fascinating thing about that is they had a deal worked out for Kyle Kuzma. And the Wizards gave Kyle Kuzma the option to not accept the trade, even though that was not contractual. He doesn't yes. have a no-trade clause. He said, I don't want to go to the Mavericks. I want to stay here and be a core member of this team. And they pivoted and did a Daniel Gafford trade instead. It was going to be two first-round picks Horrible. for Kyle Kuzma. Instead, they ended up with people. You get Kyle Kuzma. He is a... Um, I think he is a volume shooter guy. Don't get me wrong, but he can make shots. He'll give you at least 15 points. I don't think it'll be a pretty 15. <laughs> don't get me wrong. He'll probably shoot 40%, but he'll give you 15. And he has uh, the height. He does have somewhat of um, some sort of athleticism. I feel like him and Luca could work great. He's just a better Dwight Powell, in my opinion. Um, and I don't even think he's still on this Mavs team, is he? But 
Yeah, bro. I just feel like. If, where's Dallas at? Dallas is eighth in the West right now. Um, I do think they're better than Sacramento. I do think they're better than uh, the Pelicans. We need consistency from them of these next few uh, games here. Um, we need Kyrie to step it up. I think he has been missing shots, but I do think he can still win games. Like, you still don't want to play Kyrie in a playoff series. I think that's what's going to make the Clippers sort of dangerous. So, uh, yeah, that's, those are my thoughts. Um, I think that this West, uh, the Western Conference is deep. I think that the, Mavs are gonna have a harder time getting to the playoffs than the uh, than the Eastern Conference. I think that you know um, the Wizards just tied the um, Pistons for nine wins on the season, and uh, the Spurs have twelve wins. So that just sort of shows what's going on right there. That being said, I still think Boston. And Milwaukee are the two strongest teams in the East. And I think that they are the only two teams where I think that they could make it to the finals. Those two. Um, I still don't think that the Cavs are ready. Uh, uh, they're not consistent enough for me. Um, but I feel like the Knicks are missing one piece still. Um, Philly, um, Joel and B just got injured. I think he's... I don't know if they should sit him for the rest of the season. I think he'll try to come back during the playoffs if they do make it, but he's a question mark. I don't think the Magic are ready. Um, I think Miami, they're going to start playing well here. Um, Indiana needs more time to gel, in my opinion. Uh, Chicago needs to blow that team up. Um, and, uh, um, the Hawks, they need to blow that team up and everybody else. But that's my thoughts on the standings as well as uh, what's going on with the Celtics and the Mavs team. I really like the Celtics um, as an NBA guy. I think that they have a lot of strengths. Um, not many weaknesses. I think that the bench could use a little bit of help. But that's a minor, minor thing when you got a great main offensive core there. Um, but yeah, like, comment, subscribe. I and mean, I'll see you guys later. Peace.